San Diego police released body cam video just about 24 hours after a deadly officer involved shooting. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Chicato. Police say the weapon the man was holding was an airsoft gun, but officers didn't know that at the time of the shooting. News 8's Elizabeth Sanchez shows us the video. This is the third officer involved shooting in San Diego in the last two weeks. And across the country, citizens are demanding that police be transparent. So police say in an effort to do that, they are releasing this video right away. We want to warn you that the video could be disturbing. Put it down! Put the gun! She's off the gun! Hey. This police body cam video shows the moment officers fired shots at a suspected gunman on Menlo Avenue. The shooting happened on Thursday, just before 4 o'clock. Police say two women called 911, saying a man pointed a gun at them. Once police arrived, the women directed officers to the man. That, that, black car? that, that guy right there. Yeah, that black As officers approached him, they tell him to get down on the ground. The officers then see his weapon. Don't touch it! You can hear them telling the man to step away from the gun. Let go of your parents, back up, put your hands up! Meanwhile, cell phone video from a nearby neighbor shows the man reaching for the gun. Walk away from the gun, bro, come on! We don't want to hurt you. Because officers say they continued to see movement, they sent a canine in and deployed a beanbag round. Hey man, you talk to me. By the time they could offer life-saving efforts, the man was dead, and officers discovered the weapon was an airsoft gun, able to fire non-metallic projectiles. Oh my God, this is on men. Oh my God. Multiple cameras captured the shooting involving seven officers. Winona Bolton described the frightening scene and says she supports police, but shootings are happening too often. Whether it's a black life, a Mexican life, or white life, another man woman, whatever, is being killed by a police officer. The suspect has been described as a light-skinned black man or Hispanic man. Police say they have the right to defend themselves. There are multiple investigations underway, and it will be up to the district attorney's office to decide if any criminal charges will be filed. Back to you. Well, if you felt like the past couple days have been hot, just wait for the weekend. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis has been tracking it all and joins us now with a first look at your microclimate forecast. Carlene, we got to turn the fans on, open the windows, or even the AC for those of us <laughs> who have it. That's true. We got to do anything we can, Marcella, for this weekend to stay nice and cool. So whether that means jumping in a pool, cranking on the AC, drinking plenty of water, do what you have to do. We are talking about some very warm temperatures and today wasn't even into the advisory time period. So let's take a look at those highs earlier today because we hit some heat. 100 degrees in Campo, lots of 90s popping up for the inland valleys and not just low 90s, we're talking mid to upper 90s. Also extending into the mountains, 80 degrees for downtown, 109 in Borrego Springs today. So the heat advisory will start tomorrow morning. That will go all the way until Sunday night at 8 p.m. for the inland valleys and the mountains. Highs in the mountains up to 102 inland valleys 94 to 104 as well as an excessive heat warning for the desert and that's with daytime highs up to 118 so a lot of heat is on the way we'll go ahead and break everything down your complete forecast coming up back to you carlo thanks carlina hot is an understatement those hot conditions bring concerns for potential wildfires but local crews say they are prepared and they want you to be as well we're always prepared. We're staffed, fully staffed. We have 11 brush roofs situated throughout the city ready to go. Also, uh, all of our crews have been training extra right now on wildland fire preparedness for different wildfires. Firefighters say you should have an emergency kit ready to go and in a safe place. Plan escape routes and make sure everyone in your family knows the plan. Also, make sure you have plenty of defensible space around your home and if you need to clear brush, do so early in the morning before it gets hot. Chula Vista is offering a safe cool zone for people to beat the heat this weekend at the former Sears building on Broadway. Visitors are required to wear a face covering and have their temperature taken. City officials say common areas will be disinfected between uses. The cool zone will be open from noon until 5 p.m. tomorrow and will remain open through next week. <music> Thank you.
The number of COVID-19 cases across San Diego is quickly approaching 19,000. Today, county leaders reported 461 new infections out of just over 8,400 tests. That is a positive rate of about 5%. The 14-day rolling average is now just under 6%. The total number of cases now stands at 18,863 with almost 12,000 recoveries. Five new deaths were also reported today. All had underlying health conditions. The death toll now stands at 420. Tonight, more than 100 residents and staff have tested positive for coronavirus at a Paradise Hills nursing home, making this the state's largest outbreak at a senior center. Management at Rio Vista Healthcare say they have a mitigation plan in place and are isolating everyone infected right now. So far, 112 residents and 33 staff members have tested positive for COVID-19. Six residents have died. They are breeding grounds for this, so it's very important that our skilled nursing facilities, and they have been having to work with state and local health departments to come up with plans to mitigate. One person at the Rio Vista facility has recovered. The outbreak there is one of three recent community outbreaks across San Diego County. As the number of coronavirus cases continues to explode here in California's prison system, Governor Gavin Newsom is taking action to decrease the already overcrowded inmate population. Today, he announced that more than 8,000 inmates could be released early, in addition to those already freed ahead of schedule over the past couple of months. News 8's Richard Allen has more on who would not be eligible, as well as the concerns some Californians have over the mass release. Well, that's right. So far, more than 5,800 people in California state prisons have tested positive for COVID-19, 31 of whom have died. Now, these numbers include more than 1,300 positive cases at San Quentin alone. This is not about, oh, they did a crime. They're humans. You do not have the right to put lives in jeopardy. Loved ones of those incarcerated in the California prison system rallied outside San Quentin, which has experienced an explosion of COVID-19 cases among its inmate population. Nothing less than the worst prison health screw up in state history. There are thousands and thousands of men and women within the prison system that need to be released. And that is now happening. Friday, state leaders announced that as many as 8,000 current inmates statewide due to be released in the next year could be released ahead of schedule as a way of stopping the spread of coronavirus within the prison system. I'm going through individual by individual people with medical uh, needs that are acute, uh, people we are fast tracking, expediting parole review. Uh, and individually reviewing those cases in order to move people forward. Critics of this decision are concerned this mass release could lead to the spread of coronavirus outside the prison system, as well as question where these inmates will all go. We're working with probation and parole to expedite the identification of housing. You don't want to just send people out and to park benches in a homeless shelter. It's been a big problem and COVID has only made it a, a hundred times worse. San Diego community activist Jason Shanley formed the nonprofit called Homework, which helps recently released inmates find housing and acquire job skills in the building trade. Our society has never really prepared well to be able to reintegrate, to re-enter formerly incarcerated folks into our community. And so now we're scrambling. Now inmates convicted of violent felonies and sex crimes are not eligible for early release. This mass release of more than 8,000 inmates should be complete by the end of August. Back to you. Thank you, Richard. If you filed for unemployment early on in the pandemic, you may have received an email recently from the EDD that requires some action. The department says some people need to complete a retroactive certification. That's because the certification process was temporarily suspended early in the pandemic because of a historically high number of unemployment claims. Whether you are working or not during that time period, the EDD needs you to needs to know about that by October 5th. New tonight, the Sweetwater Union School District and its teachers union have reached a deal to resolve a longstanding labor dispute in what's being described as a cost neutral compromise. The agreement with the Sweetwater Educators Association returns librarians who were laid off to work earlier this year back to work part time. It reinstates three of the district's learning centers and reduces the work year by three days. 237 teachers and staff were given pink slips back in March. 
Tonight, San Diego wants to know what you think about competing plans for the city's next destination development. The city is looking to transform the aging sports arena and 48 acres of parking lots into a housing, sports and entertainment hub. The proposals from Brookfield Properties and Toll Brothers are now available in a virtual open house. To check them out and share your opinion, go to the help button at CBS8.com. The comment period closes on July 20th. Today, the Coastal Commission okayed an updated plan to shore up the bluffs in Del Mar. The new modifications extend a retaining wall near 12th Street and add more support columns along the bluffs. The stabilization project began after a series of collapses last year, including one in Encinitas that left three people dead. The project is currently in Stage 4 and will seek funding for Stage 5 this summer. The summer racing season is underway in Del Mar. The 81st summer meet kicked off this afternoon, but was noticeably different with no fans in the stands. There are also new safety protocols for jockeys, trainers and racetrack staff. There will be races every Friday, Saturday and Sunday with the last of the summer season scheduled for a Labor Day Monday slate. That's a special slate. Races will be broadcast on Television Games Network or TVG. John Howard will have more on today's races coming up in sports.